Well, we would always tell him to make good choices, to make sure that he found good friends and people with like values, and that he always uh, relied on his prayer life, and that he would always remember Jeremiah 29 11. I know the plans I have for you, plans to not harm you, Plan plans to give you hope, plans to give you a future. And he carried that with him throughout his football career. And I think that made a difference in him making the choices that he made and doing what he did. And so we're just so proud of him. Um, well, my main reason for being here and why I think it's very important for everybody to be here is because uh, it's all about the kids and just to get some insight on, uh, you know, going to college, getting uh, the education and all the little things that, you know, that you don't get from coaches, but you get from parents who has been through that experience and can share their insight on what to expect and what not to expect. And uh, that way, uh, and it's also, you know, to help keep our kids in the college because uh, a lot of kids don't have the opportunity to go to college and some of them go to college and then they don't last because they don't know what to expect. But if the parents can get insight on little things from other parents who've been through that experience, I think that's a great opportunity for the parents and uh, it's just a great opportunity and I feel like that's why it's important for me to be here for my son and for some of my players. Okay, now we have an NFL player here, former NFL player. Sir, you want to um, introduce yourself and tell us your story. Why is it important for you to be here? I think it's very important for me to be here. Uh, Black Hat stated earlier, uh, football is not going to be there. We have about two, two to three percent of uh, football players is going to make it. You know, I feel like an education. I'm on the education side. I feel like education is going to carry you on through. I've been teaching and uh, coaching for 35 years. This is my 35th year of education. You know, and um, good Lord blessed me to get a football scholarship. I took fully advantage of that and um, got a bachelor's degree in four and a half years. That was four and a half years I did get my bachelor's degree and I went on and uh, played those years, those couple of years in the NFL and I came back and I started educating. And I went back and I received two master's degrees. Right now I'm a current assistant principal at Wilkinson Middle School. I was here at Garland Independent School District at Garland High School for 26 years, 26 of those years. Okay, and, and you played for the Falcons. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. That was a big experience. I was young, very young, very young. And at that time, I thought, hey, I'm gonna play for the, for the next 10, 15 years. You know, that was that state of mind that I had. But eventually, uh, reality kicked in. You know, it really did, it kicked in. I think these young men should know that. Football is not gonna be there all the time, but that education is gonna be, you still can teach and coach at 70, 60, or uh, 65 years old. You can still do that. You know, that was a big experience. I'm, I'm a country boy out of Louisiana, and uh, going to Atlanta, man, I seen a lot of things. I seen a lot of things, and I was I experienced a lot of things. And these guys that's getting drafted as of today, I didn't make that type of money that they made. I just had that experience at that time back in the early, late, late 80s. And um, it's going to come. It's going to come, but they just have to be ready for it. And I want to give back to them and, and tell them a little bit about my story and the experience that I had. But I'm going to nail that down about our education. You can't beat that. Okay. I coached football here at Garland and I was one of the coaches to be fortunate to be on that state championship team. That was the last time we won a state championship in Garland in 1999 and I was one of the coaches on that coaching staff. Okay. I had the opportunity to work with this young man right here. We worked together for 18 years. I've been known yeah. here for 18 years. Yes. And I'm coaching his son now. Yes. <laughs> That's sexy. I'm very excited to be here this evening and very appreciative of the NFL moms, alumni, and current players and then it brought this here to Garland ISD. So at this point, I want to bring up, and first I just want to thank her for uh, putting this together, getting everyone involved, uh, the other moms that will be speaking as well, the players that are going to be participating uh, either virtually or in person. And I'll be bringing her up now. Her son, uh, and she'll probably tell us, I won't even say I'll let her tell it for herself, but I want to bring up Ms. Jokaya Benergy. She's with the NFL moms. And uh, she had a son to attend school right here in Garland. She'll talk more about that, I'm sure, when she comes up. Mr. Dennis. We moved to Garland when my oldest son was shared. 
uh, was three years old in search of an outstanding school program. Our dream was realized when he was admitted to the gifted program. Three years later, our second son joined us and both of them went through the GISD program, graduated from Garland High School, the Owls, and pursued successful careers in their fields. I'm proud to share my youngest, I'm proud to share that my youngest son, Hakim Adenichi, currently plays for the Cleveland Browns and will be speaking with you later. Transitioning from high school to collegiate football was not a, a straightforward as it might seem. Unlike high school, where information is more accessible, moving into collegiate and professional sports can feel like navigating uncharted territory. I will say that again, uncharted territory. I wish I had known how to better navigate this transition. In my quest for guidance, I discovered a remarkable uh, support system of sisterhood, women supporting women, answering crucial questions, and offering help, and also offering outreach programs to the community. One such program is Next Level Up. It's beginning with the end in mind. Today, we have moms from Pittsburgh NFL Moms, as we've been called, uh, including myself, here to share our experiences and insight with you. We hope that our stories will assist you and your students' athletes in navigating their own journeys. At this time, I'd like to introduce our moderator. Our moderator is Valerie Williams. She is a dedicated educator with a focus on special education, a devoted wife and a proud mother of four accomplished Division I athletes. Okay, four accomplished Division I athletes. Mrs. Williams has played a significant role in our children's lives, fostering both their academic and athletic achievement. Our oldest son, Aaron, plays college football for the Texas Longhorns and was selected by the Buffalo Bills in the second round of 2011 NFL Draft. Our other three children are successful in their various career fields. With, other, with over a decade of experience in education, particularly in special education, Valin has been a strong advocate for students with diverse learning needs. Additionally, she has been an active member of the Professional Football Mothers Association for over 20 years, supporting families in the world of academia and athletics. She resides in Austin, Texas, where she has conducted next level lock programs. Mrs. Williams, is, a, is the second vice president of PIFMA, our organization, and brings a wealth of knowledge about the NFL and PIFMA as an organization. Please join me in welcoming our second vice president of PIFMA, Mrs. Valin Williams, our mother. We're here just to give you just an abundance of information to hopefully help your students be accomplished whatever their next goal may be. Okay, Michael is a, um, he's from Dallas, Texas, a native, went to, with ties to Garland. His father, Michael Crabtree Sr., was a Garland resident who successfully coached Pee Wee Leagues in baseball, football, and basketball. Michael Jr. is now a retired professional football player who spent 11 years as a wide receiver in the NFL. He attended David W. Carter High School in Dallas, where he excelled in basketball, football, and track, earning scholarships from 10 colleges. At Texas Tech University, Michael the Red Raiders and earned All-American honors twice. He was selected 10th overall by the San Francisco and in the 2009 NFL Draft, 
where he spent six seasons before playing for the Oakland Raiders, Baltimore Ravens, and Arizona Cardinals. Texas Tech honored Michael with a large mural as part of a $51.1 million expansion to Jerry Jones AT&T Stadium, and his image is prominently displayed in the football training facility. In September of 2021, Michael was inducted into the Texas Tech Football Ring of Honor. He also played in a Super Bowl, uh, in Super Bowl 47 in 2013. He has a, a foundation called Crafty Foundation, and the mission of Craft Life Foundation is to create an environment for inner city youth that encourages and promotes personal and professional development through cultural activities, the arts, music, sports, and academics with the vision of producing well-rounded individuals. It is my honor to welcome our special guest, Michael Alex Crabtree Jr. Just give us a brief idea of what it was like for you coming out of high school, going into college. So, uh, mission driven. Uh, I just couldn't wait to go to college. What was your most exciting thing about going to college? To be in all, all uh, I'm going to my own as a young man, uh, learning it, uh, up in my head a couple times and learning it from, you know, I thought that was, a, that was one of the best times in my life was college. What would you do, what would be the advice that you would give a high school athlete to accomplish in high school now that you think that you might not have accomplished because you, of just not having that experience? So what would you offer a high schooler the most important thing that you would emphasize now that you've gone through the high school college journey? Know what you want to do. Uh, and don't let nobody distract you or get in your way there. Because distractions come for everybody. And uh, it's about the, with the one that understand their goal and uh, what they want to accomplish. What, do you, what would you say was your most um, exciting moment in the NFL? In the NFL, exciting uh, probably going to Super Bowl. I would say it was better this week because uh, it's one of my I'm close to sighted on those and one of the sad spots. So uh, just not out there. So <laughs> I mean, I was at Super Bowl. And I'm sure you've experienced losses and wins. How did you handle your lose the losses? Uh, loss and uh, loss is a learning experience. Uh, I always learn. I mean, I I I, I, I this to my, my son every day. Uh, you need loss, can't wait all the time. But how you gotta learn, I ain't gotta do fair. Everybody's saying you did see you that the first glitch. It's hard to be in first glitch. So but it's it's, it's also hard to be a city that, that and take it and uh and, and wanna be first the much you get to first place or you win, whatever to try to do the step more for more grad man. Before you can receive a D1 or D2 scholarship, you must go through the NCAA Eligibility Center. And in that center, it tells you in your high school what courses you can and cannot take. So for example, I'll just give you, um, back when my son went to school, there was this thing called math modeling because he disliked math beyond belief and that wasn't his strongest suit. So he had to complete, because they only take your core classes, math, language arts, social studies, um, a foreign language, and I'm missing one. Science, thank you. <laughs> it's going so they only take those four core classes, and then you have some electives, which would just be your foreign language that they'll accept. They don't take your PE, they don't take your band, they don't take your dance, and all the other things that we have so much fun with. They only take those core classes. And they only take certain ones of those core classes. Math modeling in my son's time was one of those acceptable courses. That course is no longer accepted. You must take two years at minimum of math, starting with Algebra 1. So, and that's to get into a Division two. So, but to give you more details, I have, I have a brochure here that you can use a QR code and that will take you directly to create a profile. It's free. So you create your profile, you put it in your high school, and then if you can keep up with all eligibility changes that take place, as well as making sure that you're working with your counselor to make sure that the classes that you need in order to get a scholarship, you are taking the correct ones and making sure that you're on task. 
They no longer require an SAT or an ACT, but that doesn't mean that your school that you're going to be applying to doesn't require it. So just keep that in mind, because my sons would have loved the fact that they didn't have to do an SAT and an ACT. Because they had to take, well, my first one, he had to take it too many times to get that up. Because I told him that GPA is easier to raise than that SAT score. But sometimes you got to learn the hard way. We, we do belong to the Professional Football Players Mothers Association. This is an organization that are filled with mothers of NFL players. Um, I'm going to let Ms. Dr. Peggy Jones come up and give you a little bit of history on the organization itself. Ms. Jones? So um, and when I think about history, who wants, wants to hear about history? But we want you to know about our organization because we are here for you. And we have something to offer, not only tonight, but we are just a busy organization serving the community. We want you to know about us. So, I am so delighted. As I look back on 1997, my son graduated from high school. And I said, oh, that's a coincidence. Or uh, however you want to call it, because that's the, that's the year that the Professional Football Players Mothers Association had a meeting to make a decision and get the ball rolling as to having a mother's organization. And that started in Baltimore, Maryland by some Baltimore Ravens mothers. It was 12 mothers that met that December. And then they decided we've got to involve other mothers all over with the, all, all the 32 teams. And so that's invite them. So they knew a good opportunity to do that was during the NFL draft in March of 1998 of that year, that next year. And so they met and they had a lot of organizational meetings after that. And subsequently, they chartered the organization they wanted to name it NFL Mothers Association. However, the NFL said, no, no, we can't use our name. So they named it the Professional Football Players Mothers Association. So we are PIFMA. PIFMA is our name. Professional Football Players Mothers Association. And so little did I know that my son's dream of playing in the NFL would put me in a position to speak to you tonight, to tonight on behalf of PIFMA. And so today, PIFMA is a 501c3 organization with over 125 active members whose sons are active or retired NFL players. Chris Johnson, the mother of Larry Johnson, is our president. The mission of PIFMA is to be a support system for the mothers of the Professional Football Players Mothers Association and to serve, support, and strengthen our communities through charitable giving. Our motto consists of three words that we want you to remember. Support, success, service. We're here to support our, our mothers in the organization along with other mothers. We're also here to support our sons and we are also here to support you as aspiring athletes and as, as parents of aspiring athletes and then when we look at success we look at success all and off the field now our sons know how to do their thing on the field but sometimes all of the pressures in their lives can cause problems so the positive image that we want them to portray, we as mothers are their backbone, we're there to help them in any way, and because we want them to be successful. So we're there to encourage them, empower them, motivate them, or whatever it takes to continue to be successful on and off the field. And then uh, the last word is service. Service is the heart of our organization. And we give back to the community. And two examples of what I wanted to uh, share with you, because we give back, no matter what city we go to, each year we have a conference in one of the major cities that has an NFL team. 
And so we give back. Uh, we do something charitable in each city. For this, and it's usually monetary along with actually uh, doing the service physically. And so the, the past, last time we were in Dallas, we gave $30,000 to three different charities. We're going to be in the Dallas area next year. So let's hope we can do that or even better next year. And then the last time we were in Harlem, you heard them say that we were, I chaired the Super Bowl event that uh, the mother sponsored at the uh, gala. It was, a, it was a gala at the atrium in downtown Harlem. And so we were able to give $10,000 to the Boys and Girls Club of Garland to set up a computer lab at the Salvation Army. So you see, we are about service. We don't just do it just one time in a year, though. We do it many times in a year. We have a form on our website, www.pilsma.org. And if you know, know a group or an agency or anyone that is in need or that can benefit from what we have to offer, then just go on the line, fill out that form, and we'll be glad to respond to you. So thank you, and I do want to end by saying, as inspiring professional athletes, perhaps one day, your mother will stand in our shoes Paying it all because of you. May your dreams come true and always remember the Professional Football Players Mothers Association is at your service. Thank you. balance between football and schoolwork your first semester. Uh, fortunately for me, uh, in high school, I was already taking really advanced level classes and I feel like I already had really good habits. And so um, to answer that, I think the biggest thing is developing good habits and it'll help you out, you know, with football in school and it'll help you out in life, whatever you do. So I think the biggest thing there is just developing good, healthy habits for you know, managing your time efficiently and getting done what you need to get done and prioritizing what you need to prioritize and, uh, you know, orderly. Uh, for college football players, what does your daily schedule look like and do you get any free time at all? Um, probably not. I mean, I don't know if it's changed since I've been there, but especially in season, you're going from seven to seven. Um, then you got, you know, classwork, extra film that you want to do, extra lifts. You have treatment, you have to wake up earlier. So in season, you're in it every day, school or tutoring or football or events, whatever it is. So you don't get much free time at all, to be honest. What all did you do to get ahead in your position groups? Honestly, just being consistent. Like there's nothing extreme that you can do within you know a day or a week or anything like that. It's just about, you know, doing more than other people, like watching more film, uh, getting extra work, getting extra listening, whatever you have to do on a day in and day out basis so that, you know, over a course of time, you're growing at those things at a faster rate because you're doing more than others. Uh, so with all that being said, the most important thing for us to remember is academics, 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 academics. Hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work. Sacrifice, sacrifice, and sacrifice. In order to get to that next level, there are some sacrifices that you're gonna have to be willing to make. And if you're not willing to make those sacrifices, then what you're basically saying is that you're okay with not achieving those goals. Because their brand is what they're looking for to represent their brand. So the University of Texas is going to look at your brand and say, mm, 
either I don't really want that brand or wow, I really like that brand. So everything that you put out, remember someone's looking so that they can use it as well. Keep that in mind. Your social media is also an aspect for you to get your recruiting up there. So remember when you put out, like for example, huddle videos that you guys get from your football games, you know, and you put up where you really didn't finish a play, but it looked good to you, you might not want to put that out because they're looking from the beginning to the end. So you're a receiver who ran an okay route, but your job was to block and you were mad because you didn't get the ball and you knew you weren't going to get the ball, so you kind of halfway did it and you didn't do your block. They're like, oh, yeah, no, next. We're looking for that person that goes from zero to 100 the whole entire time. Once again, that's a brand. They're looking at how you treat your family. When they come and then, let's just say they're not recruiting you. Just to give you an idea, they're not recruiting you, but there's somebody on your team that they are recruiting. That's a great opportunity for you to show out. But you get on the field and you show out, and then the coach takes you out for whatever the reason, and then you start throwing your helmet and, you know, and saying words that are inappropriate. They're like, oh man, I thought about that kid, but never mind. Let me go on to the next. So all those little bitty things that we don't necessarily think about where our emotions get in and sometimes we think that we, we're such excellent players that we can just go out there and just play and not understand that it's not all about you just playing because football is definitely a development of life skills and 100%. Um, so just keep those things in mind. There are not as many as you think um, that make it from high school, there's like over a million high school athletes. Uh, of that million, 5% go to college. You know, another 5% I'm, that, I'm not saying they don't go to college, go to play football. Uh, it's not easy to get into football college. Whether it's an FBS, a Division One, Division Two. Your power five schools, your small schools, those are all difficult to get into because they're all the guys that were top in their high school in some way, shape, or form. So we have to keep that in mind when we're thinking about what we want to go and where we're going to go. Set your goals, but also make those goals realistic. If you're 5'3 with a low GPA and your second stream on varsity, you probably are not gonna get picked up by a power five school. But that doesn't mean that you can't go and play at a smaller school that's division one. The main goal is for you to get your education paid for. That's the main goal. Because football, especially the NFL, stands for not for long. <laughs> and every one of these mothers that are here have a story of the same journey, but the journey was different. My son was blessed, he was able to stay in seven years, but he didn't retire by choice. He retired by injury. That didn't make him happy at all. There are others who retired by choice. Mine didn't. I believe Miss Little can tell you about her journey. Hers journey was a little bit different than my journey. It was still the same journey. But it all ends up to plan B. We must have plan B. And plan B starts in high school. So just keep those things in mind. And I know you guys are starting late, so I don't want to hold you up much more. But the best practices for recruiting, this is just really brief. Number one is your academics. I can't emphasize that enough. You're a student athlete, student comes first. Academics are priority. Um, your social media. Especially if you post, you know, give, give your teammates credit, right? Um, speak about your, your family, you know, went to church today, really enjoyed what the pastor had to say, maybe had to reflect on myself. That, that makes it look, what? That's something different. That's not what you typically will see from a high school student. So just keep in mind of, of what you put out there. Well, scholarships have now changed. Also, there's, you know, they've opened it up now. It's, there's not just 85 in football, I believe it's like 125 now. So that has helped out a great deal. But that also doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be a full scholarship. And so when you have the grades, if you don't get a full scholarship from the school, 
you can get a academic scholarship to help out that full scholarship. Um, so I always say that it, it definitely helps like in Division Two, at least at one time. I, I would have to refresh my memory on this one though. But Division Two, they had to spread their scholarships out a little bit more because they had less monies. And so they would add on the academic scholarship with the school scholarship. Now the thing that about the high schoolers now is that you guys are competing against the transport portal. That transport portal has your Alabamas, your Georgias, your UTs, and all these Power 5 people who are just, they may have graduated from school early and they're just like, yeah, you know, I want to play for a different school. And so they're now going to the portal. And so high schoolers are competing with them. They, at one point when my son went in, that was 2011, and, our, and some of our other sons that went in, there was mostly, you know, you would grab your players from high school and then you would build them up. But now they can get these mature, experienced athletes with great grades, great branding, and they can just pull them out of a junior college or they can pull them out of a, the transport portal and begin. So it's, once again, it's just the competition that you have to be on your game the entire time. You just can't slack off. In Garland, we receive a lot of support uh, from our Board of Trustees and our Superintendent's Roundtable. And we are privileged to have here with us this evening one of our Board of Trustee members, Ms. Linda Griffin. And I want to ask her to come up and share a few words with us before we conclude. All right, amen. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Everyone that attends Garland ISD, whether you're a parent or a student, would you please stand to your feet and, and thank these moms for taking the time to come and share valuable information. You know, I'm going to say this, you all have followed me. You can do better than that. Let's give them a great round of applause. You may be seated, thank you. What you all do not know is I have been asking for things like this for our athletes for more than 26 years since I've been on the board. And I want to shout out to Coach Sharp, are you still here? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I thought I was going to have nothing in common tonight, but it was his post on Facebook that got me here. But we go back to when he was a child, uh -huh. and they were members of our church on First Street in Garland when we first started. So, Coach, thank you, and keep up the good work. Then Coach Cheeks was here. I'm going to call the roll because I expected to know no one. <laughs> and then I'm going to call Coach Cheeks because my husband and I was able to attend every one of those games that led us to the 1999 championship game that we won in Houston as the Garland Owls. Then I looked over and I saw Reverend Jones, then I saw Peggy, and then as the first speaker, Hakeem, I kept saying, I know that name. I know that name. And I turned to the athletic director. I said, he was the speaker at our signing day. And he was like, yes. And I still have his signed card. It's in my console of my car. So, why do I say all of that? We all need each other to make it. And athletes, what you got tonight, you couldn't get in the counselor's office. And so when you see opportunities to broaden your horizons, take advantage of it. And I salute the students and parents that showed up 
And Dr. Griffin, now that you know it was one of my objectives for a long time, uh, you all may be hearing from us <laughs> uh, next year. But from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I had a track star, but I had a boy. And so we made the connections. Thank you all. We love you for taking the time to come and share with Garland ISD because we are the best school district in the state of Texas. Michael Crabtree, see you come on up, Mr. Crabtree. I want to touch y'all. I'm one of the fathers. I'm mother's representing. I want to represent the fathers. <laughs> so one thing they didn't touch on was getting into college. Uh, she said five percent. A lot of athletes come. They get one semester. They head back at home. So the most important thing is to get your grades, to stay in school, and just because you get your scholarship mean you make the team. You still have to work hard. And uh, Michael, he started out. He he didn't try hard in high school. And I told him that you gonna need this. And he got to college. He said, Dad, you're right because college is a lot harder than high school. So you have to work hard and you're an athlete. So your time, you don't have time to really study. You have tutors. Make sure you use your tutors. Yeah. So, yeah. And then to get to that level, you do have to work hard. So every athlete have to keep their job. So what they have to do is work hard, off trainers, off season workouts, because it's My son asked me to give you a summary statement that has guided his life all the way to through school, through college, through the NFL, and even currently now. So to all the parents, and especially to the student athletes, I'm going to read what he summarized to me today and to his mother. And this is Daryl Jones from Carter High School. So you'll hear some of the same words and advice that Crabtree gave, because they both went to Carter High School. Here's what Daryl said, and I quote, High school student athlete, you are to answer three important questions. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? What's the process necessary to get there? This involves writing down your goals. There are two key factors that will set you apart from those you are competing with and against. Attitude and effort. Your attitude and effort. You alone control your attitude. You alone control your effort. Therefore, respect your parents, adhere to the coach's direction, and follow your teacher's instruction. Follow the step-by-step -step process to reach your goal that you have written down. Stretch yourself. Do not cheat above all. And then Daryl adds this. Maximize every opportunity you have at this point in your life, a long life journey. Stretch yourself continuously and do more than just what is required of you. And then he signs off by saying what we always told him. Trust God, stay strong, and see it through. And thank you very much. Forgive me this opportunity to read Daryl's statement. And to all of you in Garland, I probably know your parents, as I worked here and was mayor for uh, three terms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all right. This is our first going with him. He's our oldest son. So uh, we new to this. So we need more uh, information that we can get. So um, I think with the NCAA stuff, with the classes, that's something new that's important. So uh, we learned that, and we got the nice moms that was here that was educating us on things. So um, it, turned, it was it was pretty good. All right, so it was important to be here because um, you know we're first time parents, freshman parent, um, and we wanted to know really what's ahead of us and how we can best prepare for not only just ourselves as parents to a student athlete, but also what can our son do to improve his game, his academics, and make sure that he has the best edge going forward in the future. So that's why we're here and it's important. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Josh? To not let people break me down. That's right. Yeah. 
Okay. Sure. Hi, I am Robert Johnson. Uh, I, my son goes to Webb Middle School, and we came out today's forum to really take a look at the opportunities for young men and even young ladies to expand their horizons, to be able to move into college, because that's, I believe, in, as they pointed out here, the student athlete, you're a student before you're anything else. And so we really wanted to come out and see that aspect of it and understand that, and then see how we might be able to migrate to the athlete part and look at uh, different schools and different opportunities uh, for our children to grow and be successful. Hello, my name is Aiden Sanders Johnson. Uh, I go to Naaman Forest. I'm a safety and receiver. And I think the importance here was show us different opportunities of what a scholarship could do for us and how we're a student before we're athletes, so grades always come first and make sure that we're on and stay on the clock of what we're doing. There you go.